So I want to show a different method uh, and one that uh, gives you a little more flexibility uh, with this. So here I have my uh, poly uh, mesh um, 3D plane or 2D plane and I'm going to subdivide that just once. Uh, so shift F or sorry uh, I've already done shift F to show poly frame and control D to uh, divide it up a little bit so you can see it. Yeah, it's fairly coarse mesh um, and uh, do a little, I'm going to do a little sculpting on it so let's get my standard brush back here and just, just going to give it some deformation and I could even go in and um, let's get a little bit smaller brush let's see I don't need that so I'm just going to go go to freehand and then I'm going to turn that, that alpha off so I should just be able to yeah. so say I only want a you know, particular part of this mask off uh, here and um, go ahead. Yeah, make something kind of like that give it a definite shape and uh, and then go to my geometry and my modified topology and uh, sorry polygroups and I'm going to group my mask here uh, and then clear the mask control shift and click just to keep that and see, delete my lower and delete hidden so that's gone so I've got this you know, kind of chunk uh, here. So that's good. That's you know I can come back and, and bring that back in because I'm going to use this uh, in a moment. So uh, I'm just going to drop out of edit mode here, and you see it's you know, it's still here in my tool palette. Um, and then uh, I'm going to Control N to clear the canvas, and then from my tool brush I'm going to pick a cylinder 3D, draw that out and go to edit mode and then with um, shift F so I can see the polyframes of it we'll come down to initialize uh, and in this case I'm going to drop the sides down to 8 make an octagon and the um, V divide all the way down to three, as far down as this, it'll go, and I'm going to take the Z size down to a, you know, somewhere around in here, and then the inner radius I'm going to increase till I get a ring, roughly the thickness of the Z depth, the Z length uh, on there, and so once I have that. And then I'm going to come back up to the top of the tool palette and make that a poly mesh 3D. So you see it drops it uh, here uh, to the tool palette. So once that's done, I'm going to get out of edit mode, control N to clear the canvas. I'm going to pick my plane uh, back here and just draw it out uh, on screen and go to edit mode. And then uh, come down to back to my modify topology pat tab here uh, in in the geometry window and there's this uh, button for micro mesh and what micro mesh does here you can, if you read the little description there is uh, it replaces every polygon with a mesh I select and if you hold over you can get a little bit hold hold control down and mouse over it you can get a little bit uh, more uh, about it so in this case I'm going to uh, replace all of those polygons with that hex ring uh, that I made or sorry that octagon uh, ring uh, that I made um, so uh, come back down to micromesh click that it's going to bring up the pick window mouse in over to where I have the uh, uh, poly mesh cylinder it's, it's in either place here and pick that 
and yet yeah, tells that it's uh, only visible uh, if if the draw macro mesh is on in the in the window palette. So I'll say OK. Go back up to my render. Uh, come to render properties here and turn on draw micro mesh. Um, and now uh, I should be able to, you know, you can see that it's doing some little dash lines. So that's letting me know that it has a micro mesh um, active. Uh, now I can come over to my best preview render and render that. And it will render that with, let's get zoomed in here and let's uh, shift F to turn polyframe off. It'll render that and replace all those polygons with that uh, octagon ring that I made. So I can get something, you know, I can get meshes uh, from that. You can replace, you could put in whatever kind of geometry you want. Um, now, just understand this only happens at rent time, which is really good because it, it can keep the polygon count very, very low uh, here for this. And this is all still sculptable, so I can sculpt on this some. Um, and then um, render, and you see it update it, uh, that. Now, just understand if I get any stretching from my from my polygons, uh, the you know I might get a little bit of distortion uh, in the in the micro mesh. In fact, let's um, get my move tool here and really distort some of these things out. And then render. You see, I get get distortion uh, from that. So it does have uh, some limitations. You want to go ahead and make sure all of your geometry is you know, this this mesh geometry is uh, where you want it and of fairly even. Uh, polygon distribution. Sometimes you may just have to uh, dynamesh uh, this thing and then uh, and then come back and rerun the um, micro mesh uh, on it. And again, you're going you could get fairly mixed results uh, if you do that. Uh, so uh, let's run that a sec. Ooh, yeah, it's really going to be pretty ugly on this non uh, non thickened uh, geometry. Um, so micro mesh then may have a little bit of a, a little bit of an issue uh, here. Let's do that and grab that and then let's render it and see what we get. Yeah, see it's Whew. Okay, yeah, and when I was, well, that's right, I forgot this thing was a plane, so when I dynameshed it, it actually gave it some material uh, or it gave it some volume. So let's, uh, I'm going to undo that a few times, get back down to something that's a little more reasonable, um, and render that. And so, yeah, that's, that's looking pretty good. Now, if I want to convert that to actual geometry uh, instead of just uh, it replacing it at render time. Um, you can come uh, up to uh, near the top of the geometry window and you see this convert BPR to geo. Uh, just click on that and you know, you'll watch the uh, count uh, go up significantly. Uh, it went from about 1600 polygons to uh, 48,000 uh, polygons. But now this is all geometry. I don't have to do it just through render time. Uh, you know, it is live and active uh, geometry, and I can um, manipulate that. Let's go back to my standard brush. You know, in, in all the kind of typical ways. Again, you, and you can you can create other pieces uh, of geometry. Um, uh, and replace that. So, you know, Ryan, you could sculpt one scale uh, and then uh, replace, um, uh, you know, use it as the uh, for the micro mesh uh, to uh, replace the polygons uh, where you wanted it. Um, it's fairly even, so that's the only that's the only drawback to it is it it it, um, it you know it's it's in whatever this whatever your polygon topology. Uh, is it maintains that so 
um, you know, be aware of that. And when I come back, I'll show uh, some other things with, say, some insert brushes that could uh, possibly help with this kind of modeling.